safety announcements to make sure we uh, maintain our, our safety during these times of COVID. Uh, just a couple of things as reminders. Please uh, it, uh, be aware of social distancing. The pews obviously are marked. Stay six feet away from anybody that's not in your household, and we ask you to do, to do the same when you come up for communion and when you're dismissed at the end of Mass. Um, also, the face mask, we ask that everybody wear a face mask at all times, and the proper way is over the nose and the mouth. The only time to remove the face mask is when you're receiving Holy Communion and then return the mask at that point in time. Um, we ask that you sanitize your hands. It should have been sanitized on the way in. When you come for Communion, sanitize at the stations at the end of the first pews, and there'll be uh, sprayers here at the sections four and five. There is one bathroom available down the hall by the chapel if you need... Uh, if you're not sure where that is, just ask one of the greeters. And then real quick to review communion, please, when your time comes for communion, the, the presider, the minister will come to your section. We ask that you exit on the right to your right, sanitize your hands, receive, and then return on the left. That will help us with the traffic flow in order that we're not stepping over each other as we come up for a communion. We'll begin the Mass shortly. Thank you very much. Welcome to St. Julie Broviard. Let us pray for the special intentions recorded in our book of intercessions and for the sick among us. Flavenel Sunga, Alice Bleskin, Jennifer Cox, William Dado, Richard Wyatt, Jim Nevin. We remember those who have died. Francis Hugh Mulville Hill, husband of Jean, Robert Svela, at this Mass, we also remember, for the people of St. Julie Briot Parish, Hugh McLaughlin, Teresa Guido. We ask that you now silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Let us take a moment in silence to remember that we are in God's presence.
I've heard a rumor the boss has returned. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's wonderful to be here to worship the Lord. And in the first reading you say, Jeremiah, you duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, in our lives, we've been duped so many times, right? The anger is over there, so we bring to the altar of the Lord, asking the Lord to give us peace. And then, at the same time, for those times we duped the Lord, we ask Him for the forgiveness. So let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you inflame us with the desire to speak your words. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you conform us to the perfection of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to the eternal reward that awaits us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek, for you my flesh pines and my soul. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you have made discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week, we heard Peter's proclamation that Jesus was in fact Christ, the Son of the living God. We believe that, or we wouldn't be here together today celebrating this Mass, thanking God for the gift of salvation, and preparing ourselves to receive him in the Eucharist, right? Well, if we do believe, then we must also accept that there is work to be done within ourselves to understand what this truly means. We must also realize and accept that if we believe in Jesus as the Son of God, and we want to live our lives focused on him, we are called to act differently in all that we do. St. Paul captures this in our second reading. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. We do this together. We do this with the support of one another. We do this today in community. This is not, however, society tells us we should act. Where, every pers- where it's every person for themselves and only the strong survive. But it is what Jesus offers us today, a new way to live, a Christian life together in community following his teachings. Matthew's Gospel reinforces this version, this vision through Jesus' exchange with Peter. He warns him, you are, not thinking, you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Today, as we are called to reflect on our own lives, we have to ask ourselves, are we of the same mindset as Peter? If not, we've got work to do. We are called to set aside all the distractions of this world and focus on Jesus. It's not an easy task, and we will fall down at times like Peter did. But it's not about how often we fall. It's about how often we get up and continue on that journey to Christ. That's what Jesus is asking us to do. He even goes so far as to explain how. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. He must deny himself. We're all called to say no to self and yes to God, to make God the focus of our lives. It's not about me, about what's in it for me, or what do I get out of it. It's about him. Ask yourself, what am I doing to stay focused on God for my life? He must take up his cross. We are called to sacrifice. The Christian life is a life of sacrificial service. We are called to offer our time, talent, and treasures to serve God through the service of others, and we're called to do this daily. It's not about the great moments of sacrifice we may offer, but about living a life in the awareness of the demands of God and the needs of others. It's a life of concern for the other more than the self. And he must follow Jesus. We are called to follow Jesus wherever he may lead us. 
We listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. How often do we spend quiet time just praying and listening? How often do we feel that nudge to do something but ignore it? Is that Jesus calling us? All this might sound like a lot of work. What if we choose another path in our life? Jesus is clear once again. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If our goal is only to save our life, we simply live for safety, security, ease, and comfort. If every decision is taken from a human point of view, we're all lo- we're, we are losing all that makes life worth living. And once we realize that we've lived a life without Jesus, we cannot get that life back once again. A person who's willing to lose his life for Jesus finds it. There's no price, no material thing that will buy a faithful friend or a dis- dis- disciplined soul. Living life with peace in the soul and joy in the heart is the reward we achieve when we choose to follow Jesus. Pope Francis shares the following thoughts on how we're to take up our cross each day and offer it to Jesus. Jesus wants us to touch human misery, to touch the suffering flesh of others. He hopes that we will enter into the reality of other people's lives and know the power of tenderness. We live for God, we live for others, not for ourselves. And sometimes we just need a little reminder. Sitting on my dresser at home is a gift from our mentor Kumpel in the diaconate. It's an engraved rock that simply says, let go, let God. Think about that for a moment. To me, that summarizes the message Jesus shares with us today. Let go, let God. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son. As disciples, we are challenged to remain faithful no matter what what may divide us from one another. Therefore, let us together express our needs before God. For the Church, may we, transf- may we be transformed by the fire of the Holy Spirit into a dynamic community of faith who witnesses to God's presence in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lead us in our government, may they approach the important issues facing our country in a spirit of mutual respect and desire to make lives better for all our citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers and administrators as they they prepare for the coming school year, may God strengthen them with patience and understanding for the students whose lives they will touch this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from the power from the power of nature. May God renew their hope and give them resources they need to rebuild their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering illness, may they know the healing presence of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithfully departed, may they be welcome to God's eternal banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Praise God. Hear our prayers, instill in us your spirit, so that we may carry on we may carry on in the certainty of your son's words of spirit and life. In his name we pray.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of your our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you. as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Julie, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen gracefully to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. At the Savior command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracefully grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And for the sake of safety, we ask that you offer a bow, head bow or a nod to those around you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room. Only say your word, my soul shall be healed. As you come forth for Holy Communion, please do so at the instruction of your greeter assigned to your section. The communion ministers will distribute to sections two and four, followed by five first, and then sections one and three. As you exit your pew, please exit to your right and return on your left. We ask that you maintain the six foot safety distance and sanitize your hands prior to receiving the body of Christ. Those receiving low gluten hosts should exit their pew with their section and instead of going to the minister, walk to the side of the altar and wait for a minister to return. We appreciate your help in providing a safe worship space for all.
Whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter. And for those at home, we'd like to offer a prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray.
Renew by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the fruit of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With the wonderful weather, we have so many joy this week. Uh, so, um, uh, Father Tiesu is turning uh, 50 years old. He's so young, right? So we're going to have a donut after Mass over there on the left. So you go out the church and then turn left. There are tables set up and then there's time to mingle because it's good to be together, right? Uh, I've heard children crying at Mass. It's beautiful, right? It means the church is alive during the midst of uncertainty about uh, COVID and everything, right? New life is still there. The joy is still there. So be rejoiced with that, brothers and sisters in Christ. And with that beautiful weather, uh, enjoy the weather and celebrate hard. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. My life. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just wanted to mention, we, uh, Father Tone forgot one announcement. Uh, you know how we like to celebrate around here. So this coming Wednesday, our boss is turning 30. So we have another birthday to celebrate. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you. to say.